What is going on friends? My name is Mark Denny and today we're talking filters, specifically the filter system that I use and whether or not the entire filter game as a whole is even relevant anymore. Now, if you consider the insane amount of dynamic range that camera sensors are shipping with nowadays, along with the advancements in post-processing techniques, well, spoiler alert, most filters are really not needed anymore. However, there is one filter out there that its effects cannot be replicated in post, no matter how much Photoshop wizardry you try to apply to an image. Now, there are two different types of filter systems out there. You have the kind that simply screw onto the end of your lens, and then you have the kind that simply slide in front of your lens. These right here require some type of a filter holder to attach it to the front of your lens element. So I've been using the Nissi filter system for the last two years. The, the kit comes with uh, three step up rings. There's a 67, a 72 and 77 millimeter thread size. And you simply just connect this to the end of your lens and that will enable you to hook the physical filter holder to the end of your lens. And as you can see, there's a slot for three filters and it simply just connects to the end of your lens with this little clip right here. Now, the reason I use this type of filter setup as opposed to the screw on kind is that I find it a little bit easier to stack multiple filters for a particular shot using this type of a filter setup. Now, there's only three types of filters that I use. The first and quite possibly my favorite is the solid neutral density filter. What an ND filter does is it stops a certain amount of light from coming in and hitting your sensor, thus allowing you to ultimately manipulate time and slow down your shutter speed. This is a uh, six stop ND filter and it ultimately will stop six stops of light from hitting my camera sensor. What's so cool about this is it allows for a lot of creativity. It does uh, amazing things around water. So you can extend that shutter speed out for, you know, five, 10, 30 seconds if you like and really flatten out the way a lake looks or an ocean. You can show motion in a waterfall or in a river. You can do really cool things with passing clouds too, just to kind of get that wispy cotton candy effect. Now to illustrate this point further, I'm at the lake by my house shooting video and the camera is automatically exposing the scene at one two thousandths of a second. As I slide in the six stop ND filter, the camera to accommodate for the lack of light reduces the shutter speed down to one sixtieth of a second or exactly a six stop reduction. So from here, you can put the camera in manual mode, get really creative with adjusting the aperture and ISO levels to create some really dramatic and moody long exposures. Now this image here is just straight out of camera, nothing fancy, perfectly exposed. And this is a 15 second exposure and you can really see the smoothness in the water. You can actually see the motion in the clouds and it's created that kind of wispy look and it's completely transformed this image. Now the next filter in my kit is the uh, graduated neutral density filter. I went with a three stop soft graduated filter. And what that means is at the top here is three stops of light reduction and it slowly fades down to the bottom where there's no light reduction at all. Where this filter comes in handy are scenes that are both very bright and very dark at the same time, such as a sunrise or a sunset. I know we've all been there before where you see an epic sunset. Of course, you want to capture it. You're frantic because you're afraid the light's going to fade. And the first thing you think of doing is expose for the sky. And uh, when you do that, the sunset comes out brilliant, but your foreground is completely dark. And then you reverse it. You expose for your foreground. That comes out fantastic. And then your sky is completely blown out. 
this filter is going to solve that problem for you. At the top here, it's going to take a lot of the brightness or the bite out of the sky. And at the bottom of the filter here, where there's no light reduction at all, it's perfectly clear. That's going to allow you to properly expose for the foreground, thus exposing for both scenes properly at the exact same time. And this seems a perfect example of that. You'll notice as I drop the filter in, the exposure for the foreground is going to remain the same, but the exposure for the clouds is going to be reduced. And some of the highlights with the clouds are going to be reduced as well. And that's kind of adding a little bit more clarity and sharpness to the overall sky. Now this is the same image from before, straight out of camera, and this is the image with the filter applied, and you'll notice that the foreground is much brighter now and the sky is not blown out, thus creating that perfectly exposed image. Now I had mentioned earlier about um, creating filters effects in Photoshop and whether or not filters are even relevant anymore. So these are the two filters, the solid ND filter and the graduated ND filter. Both of their effects can be completed in Photoshop and are really not necessary. So for the, uh, the graduated ND filter, you can easily just take an exposure for the sky, for instance, using our sunset example, and also take another exposure for the foreground and simply merge those together in Photoshop to get one complete proper image, properly exposed image. So that's very simple to do. Now this right here, in order to create um, the effect of smooth water or show um, motion in water or move in clouds this is a little bit more difficult to do in Photoshop um, you really have to take I don't know maybe 20 to 100 versions of one image and then merge all those together to show motion in clouds or water so although this can be replicated in Photoshop it's a lot more easy to use with a filter and at the end of the day it really comes down to one thing where do you want to spend your time do you want to be outdoors behind your camera or do you want to be indoors behind a computer? I will always go with the former. I would much rather be behind my camera and uh, always trying to get the images exposed properly in camera than having to rely on post-production wizardry in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever kind of post-production uh, tool you use. And finally, the most important filter for any landscape photographer's kit should be a circular polarizer. Now, what a polarizer does is it reduces scattered light, which ultimately will reduce haze and improve color saturation. It can also take reflection out of water or reflection out of if there's like water on leaves or rocks or anything like that. It'll take a lot of the, um, the shine out of that and at the same time bringing out the richness of those colors. Now, um, polarizers are really cool because they spin. So uh, there's certain degrees of polarization all around the circle and there's actually a point of the polarizer where there's no polarization being applied. And of course, the exact opposite side of that will be where there's the, uh, the most polarization being applied. So with the Nissi filter system, there's just these small little wheels here that you just simply spin and that's going to rotate the polarizer around to get the desired effect. So um, this is great for, of course, anytime there's any kind of water around, but there doesn't necessarily need to be water around to um, make good use of this filter. I use it on just about every single landscape photography session that I go on, unless it's at night. But this right here is uh, probably one of my favorite things about this, besides the fact that it removes reflection from anything that's wet or shiny, is the, what it does to the sky. I mean, it can really deepen the blueness of a sky and just really make the overall saturation of colors pop. So this is definitely critical. This filter's effect cannot be replicated in Photoshop or in anything. So in my opinion, if you were to buy one filter, this should be the filter to get the circular polarizer. Don't leave home with that. Now, two quick things to note when you use a circular polarizer. One, whenever you use one, you're gonna be reducing the amount of light that comes into your camera anywhere from one to two stops, which I think is a good thing. It's kind of like having an ND filter and a polarizer built into one. So that's pretty neat. The other is you really need to pay attention to where the sun is in relation to your camera. So if you have the polarizer on your camera and you're shooting directly into the sun, the polarizer is not going to work at all. The sun needs to be either to the left of you or to the right of you, roughly 90 degrees degrees or directly across from your shoulder on either side that's going to be where you're going to get the greatest amount of polarization or polarizing effect so make sure you pay attention to where the sun is or the time of day you're planning for your shoot whenever you're using a polarizing filter so let's wrap a bow around this entire topic do you really need filters most of them you really don't except for the circular polarizer that's definitely a must-have in any landscape photographer's kit 
It really comes down to where do you want to spend the most of your time? Do you want to be behind the camera or do you want to be behind the computer? So with that being said, I am a big fan of filters. I would recommend getting a coarse circular polarizer, either a six or 10 stop solid neutral density filter and either a uh, three stop soft edge graduated filter or a three stop hard edge graduated filter or both. But I'm a big fan of filters. I enjoy um, what they enable me to do in camera. So uh, I hope you found the video entertaining. If uh, you liked it, like it. If you are, aren't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Triple A, credits are right. Hang up the phone and let your heart break on the inner lane. 24 twice, she's on the phone but she's staying on with